This is Podanga's Dactylotheras. Beautiful. Love this orchid. <laughs> it's not doing what I want. It is supposed to grow roots into its snazzy soap dish that is filled with lava rock. And you can clearly see that's not happening. So I have a mount prepared for it. Do you remember the game called Spirograph? That is the inspiration as to what I'm thinking of how to get my podangas onto this mount. Oh my goodness. Let's see if my theory proves successful. I so wanted this to work, but all the roots are going everywhere. And in my super dry climate, this is not sustainable. As you can see, I'm losing a nice root here. Lost the root tip back here. <sighs> yeah, she's not doing what I was hoping she would do. And the microfiber itself, that's not going to be long lasting either. Also, because during the winter, I have to be super careful how I water her, which even on a mount, that is going to be concerning but I won't know until I try if I can even get her on the mount. Spirograph, anyone? I used to love that game. That's what we're going to try and do with Podangas. Thank you so much for being here. Now, my mount is also targeted with its design as in what I cut out. But first of all, <laughs> you can see I don't know what I'm doing. I'm only assuming I have to take the Podangas out of this little soap container and see if there are any viable roots in here. I doubt it very, very much, but I hope I'm wrong. Oh, it's branching. Yeah, we're gonna try and take advantage of that. Let's go against those root tips. There's no reason for me to tip out my entire lava rock stash. I don't have a single viable root to work with. Okay, that pretty much takes care of everything else. In a way, I'm glad I was right, but now comes the big, big test. Because you see this beautiful piece of cork here? You see that ridge in there? The idea being, I have to be careful with the leaves because they break easily. The idea being that the roots, even though they're dead, the stem goes in here and then somehow I'm going to use what I have available to me as viable roots and get them to help me pin the orchid to the mount without destroying them, without cutting them off. Oh my goodness, wish us luck. This is gonna be more of a show than a tell unless I can add commentary afterwards while I'm showing because my mind is going 100 miles an hour. So let's slow all that down and let's take it step by step. There's the hardware. <laughs> the software is in my head. <laughs> At the moment, it's feeling a bit mushy. <laughs> okay, so let's go with the plan. Oh, let's watch the root tips. They could be the future of our orchid. And let's see if it is true that I can just wedge her in here as low as possible. And if I have to turn her around, I can and I will. Just because those other root tips. <laughs> oh, I want them. I need them. I don't want to break them. So, yeah, this was the plan. That root is going to die. It's already declining at the base here. So I can use that. I can use this one down here. And I can use what is sticking out right here. Now, I hope I don't have any air pockets in any of this cork piece because when I screw those L hooks in, I want to make sure that they find a solid grip. So I'm gonna put two just in case I find an air pocket on one because I don't wanna keep maneuvering and jiggling this orchid around. I'm going to put one right here in case I find an air pocket another one is going to go there and these leaves are definitely not as sturdy as they look 
We're gonna do one here, which might reach an air pocket. We'll have to see. Maybe we can work with an angle. These leaves break off super easily. Now my plan is not to make her grow upright towards the mount. I'm more concerned about the fact that if she then grows back upright towards the light, that's great. My, my major concern is to secure her. I would love to have this root actually in the crevice over here, but if I turn the orchid around, I am jeopardizing these root tips. One, two, three, and branching at the end. So I will soak her in that product called Bactophil just for some hydration. I am not trying to do this to get the roots to comply. They are super stiff, but at least get some energy into the orchid because, oh my goodness, if she is only half as stressed as I am, then <laughs> that's a lot of stress. I just had a thought. I'm going to cut this piece right here away and create this canyon all the way through. Because if that root can go in there, then we're already home and dry at least for one root to get high humidity. I'm not using fishing line. <laughs> Let's see if our spirograph design works. I'm gonna use this because it's softer and more gentle on the roots. I've made a slip knot just to tie one end to one hook. I've left myself some extra at the end here for tying off, if that's the case. Should that be the case? Let's get the orchid. Whatever the outcome is, would you please give this video a like, at least an A for effort? <laughs> <laughs> will be very much appreciated. You see, it's easy to water this orchid during the summer because I just go around with my mister. I don't have that luxury during the winter. And if I didn't have such a windy environment, <clears throat> she's wedged into her little canyon there. But I have a very windy environment, so I can't just leave her that way. Now comes the spirograph idea, but applied to orchids. I used to love that so, so much. I remember as a child in Kenya, I got one from my grandparents for Christmas. Whoa. And well, tell you the fun I had with it. I lost quite a few of those little pieces and parts, but I really enjoyed messing around with it. The reason I am trying to get this a little tighter is because I would like to have the string not as loose because when she goes and hangs, I don't want gravity to be pulling her down. And this is a fiddly little screw back in here because I've put it in at an angle so that it wouldn't come out of that canyon that is actually in the cork. All the while I'm looking here because here are my root tips. <laughs> And the leaves, of course. Watch the leaves. Let's see. The moment of truth. Oh, drum roll. There we go. Yes, it's working. She's at least on the mound. Not quite done yet, though. Not quite done yet. My handy dandy hob filter material is going to be my replacement for sphagnum moss. Just making sure that the loose impediments are not the ones that are supposed to hold the hob filter material in their place. <laughs> oh, 
and stretch it out a little bit because I do want it to flow down. I don't want it dripping. This is all part and parcel of me thinking about winter, the conditions. If I can avoid dripping, by the time I have to mist this orchid in winter, then I would like to kind of guide the flow of the mist down. Touching a root. We'll see if that works. Should it cause me any kind of issues, during the winter, of course, I can always change what I'm doing here now, thank goodness. I want that to touch, so for the summer it'll be just fine. Everything is just fine during the summer. It's the winter I'm concerned about. And this is my 3.0, Podangas Dactyloceras 3.0. So that tells you I have failed this orchid two times before, but I really, really want her in my collection because, you know, Kenya. And she blooms so beautifully. She's otherwise a very happy orchid. If she would have just grown her roots into my soap dish. What was wrong with my soap dish? Please. There's more humidity in my soap dish than anywhere else on the patio. This one I'll probably remove during the winter. It's too far by the stem. The risk of that causing rot is extremely high. And that is how quickly you can change your mind with hob filter material, I suppose with sphagnum moss as well. But I thought, why do I need that second strip to the left? I don't. There are no roots, so I took that off straight away. Just figured, what's the point? <laughs> this is not an orchid I wanted to grow mounted, but she was not going to be happy if she was going to stay in her soap dish. Quel dommage that the roots did not go down. What a pity. I hope she does well. In my opinion, Spirograph came through on this one <laughs> and we even got those root tips into the canyon. All in all, it's not a bad result for something that I had some sleepless nights over. I hope that this was helpful in some way. Maybe you've got an unruly orchid as well. It won't grow into the pot. You will need to mount it if you want to try and keep it happy. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you haven't subscribed, <laughs> Please don't let this video or this technique put you off from subscribing. <laughs> There's plenty of other videos that are full of information <laughs> and probably more aesthetically pleasing than this one. Anywho, thank you for subscribing. If you are new to the channel, thank you for being here. Thank you to all the subscribers that have been with me on this journey for all these years. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. I wish you a fabulous day on that one condition, though please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.